What's up, ladies and gents? I'm Shreno One, your host, and welcome back to more Metal Gear Solid V, the Phantom Pain No Traces walkthrough. Next up is mission number 29, Metallic Archaea. This mission is very difficult to accomplish. It is very repetitive, it is long, and this will frustrate you immensely. But I promise you, if you stick to it, you're going to be able to complete No Traces. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into this. Hopefully you guys enjoy, and of course, it's go time. First things first is you're going to move all the way over here. You want to get two of the skulls to move in this direction. Make sure both of them have their swords out. This will not work unless you have their swords out. And now we have the pattern. So what you have to do is once you get one, wait here until you get the second. And once that happens, the pattern will set itself up for you to be able to continually do the same thing over and over again. Now this is how you pull this off. Again, it will only work if both of them have melee weapons out and they're both near each other. So, we're going to be going back and forth between each enemy. There are two types of enemies that we're going to be messing with in this level. One is going to be the jumping enemy and the other is going to be the standing straight up melee enemy. So, the jumping enemy is on the other side. It's always the same. As soon as he jumps, hit the RT for the counter and then you will get the hit. Now the other guy, this guy, he does two different types of hits. One is a long hit and one is a short hit. So the timing changes. Obviously the longer hit takes a little bit more time before you get the option of hitting the RT. And the shorter one is definitely a lot shorter. So always know where you're at inside each and every one. That was a short one so you see that obviously the timing will be different. So now that we know the next one is going to be long. Now the reason I got them in between these two buildings is because we don't want the other two skulls to see what is going on. Uh, if they do see what's going on, they will come in and they will screw up the entire pattern and of course that will ruin everything. You want two enemies to be right here so that you can go back and forth. Notice the first thing that we did was take down their armor and now we're actually taking down their health. So their health takes quite a while to take down. This is not something that you can pull off super quick. It's going to take you again 15 to 16 minutes depending on uh, the time that you're doing if you make any mistakes or whatnot and again it's okay to make mistakes because all you have to do is get back into this same pattern again eventually and there's one way that you can do that let's say if I missed one of these right here and they go off and do something else right they're gonna go back into weapon mode and uh, probably throw rocks at you and whatnot you need to go and follow them chase them get them to where they're both close to you and then as soon as they're both in the same area and they're close to you they'll get out their melee weapons and that's when you can continue and do this again um, again obviously the the perfect objective here would be to not mess up this part is you have them in the pattern it's a back and forth kind of thing and you want to make sure that you don't mess up any of the timings or else it could completely screw you over uh, again, it's very monotonous, and we're going to do this over and over and over again. But, because of the limitations of no traces, this is the best way to complete this, as you are allowed to CQC boss enemies on levels. Now, you could probably bring in a vehicle if you wanted to, to run them over, other different kind of things like that, but it's not going to be faster than this right here, which, even though this does take quite a bit of time, and it is a continuation. So, always know that... The reason you're able to get into this pattern is because of the cinemas that happen. So because you go into the little cinema that happens right here, it makes the other guy do something different than he would do if you didn't have the cinema. So to put that into perspective, if you're not going in and doing one of these CQC moves, the enemies will transport away and you will not get this pattern over and over again. The other thing you want to take note is Make sure that you are on the same hits with each one of them because once you take one down Then you should be able to take the next one down and then both will be down 
Now, there's a problem. Let's say you screw up one of these here, and then you have to get them back into that thing a little bit later. Say you might get a CQC on one, and one might be too ahead of the other. Well, what that's going to do is that means the pattern is going to be completely ruined, and you will not be able to complete it in the same manner, meaning that when you take one out, and he's out, and you go over and hit the next one, but he still has one more hit to go, he is going to go off and run away because he doesn't have that other... Snake doesn't have the other uh, cinema to play or the other counter to do to get the guy to continually keep coming after you. So because of that, do your best to try to make sure that you are back one and back four. So it's a re repeated pattern over and over again. If you screw it up once, it can make things a lot more difficult. But it's okay. I want to show you that you can screw up and... Uh, uh, it can take a while to get back into it, but once you do get back into it, then you're perfectly fine. Um, you can take a lot of hits from these guys, so it's not like it's an instant death if they hit you once or whatever. But uh, there are a few instances where that you can be killed instantly if one of them jumps on you. Um, but as you can see, we've got them down pretty much below halfway. So. Again, it's a lot of hits over and over again, and there's not really much too much to explain. So I'm going to wait on the commentary until we get down to where both of these are going to be taken out. Alright, so now we've got this guy completely done and out. And now we've got this guy done and out. And because both of them are done and out, the next two are going to automatically come in. So make sure you get out of the way. As they will immediately do that right there. And then hurry up and run to the other side so that way you can fault them. You don't have to fault them, but it's something you can do if you want. And now we have the other two. So. It takes a little while to get them back into that same pattern that you need them. So what you want to do is obviously mark them so you know where they are. Notice how they're in weapon modes. You want both of them close to each other and close to you in order to get them into melee mode. I want to do it around this area, but um, it's very, very hard to get them both to come over here. So you might have to do it out in the open, which is okay because there's only two of them left. All right, so now we got them both right next to each other. We can get really close, and we can get them both. There we go. Perfect. So now they both have the melees out. It looks like he went and got his weapon out. Oh, good. Perfect. So now we've got the pattern. So now we rinse and repeat this same exact thing that we just did over and over again. <laughs> Now, the only thing that you want to watch out for in this situation, since you're out in the open, is the other enemies. And the other enemies can screw you over because if they come near you, they could grab you. And that'll ruin pretty much everything. So again, this is now the same repeated pattern over and over again. Now, the other thing to note is you want to try to get them a little further apart from each other. Because if they're too close to each other, you won't have a good angle at when you turn around to do this right here. So you want to get them further and further apart so that you have more time to 
react to the guy that jumps. Because if you're too close to the guy that jumps, then you won't be at the right angle to be able to do the counterattack. And if you don't do the counterattack, then they're going to start running off and uh, try to kill you from afar. And you don't want that to happen. You want them to stay in melee mode. You just always have to remember, listen to your headphones if you're playing with headphones. As soon as you take this guy out, as soon as you listen to it, you can hear when the guy goes into invisibility mode. If you listen to that and you figure out which direction it's in, let's say it's in your left ear, then you know you gotta go behind you. He just did it right there. So now you know as soon as I turn around, just go directly behind me and he'll appear right there. And it's a, you know, repeated over and over again. That's the hardest one because it takes so long for him to actually swing. And again, you can do this with the second guys out in the open because you don't have to worry about the other two. You can also use your bionic arm against the guy that stays on the ground because you have just enough time to do it, but the bionic arm doesn't really work as well as it used to before they patched it. So you can't really use that to your advantage anymore as much. Although it does do a little bit more damage to that enemy, but then again, you also screw up the pattern if you do more damage to a specific enemy because they're both on different hits to kill them. Which means that the last guy will take longer to kill because you'll constantly have to find him again as he transports away from you since there's only one guy left. There's no way to keep the pattern going. So my suggestion would be to just constantly keep the pattern going and don't mess up. If you do mess up, do the same thing that I did earlier when I had to find these guys. Um, you know, get them both close to each other and they both should go into melee mode and then wait for that perfect timing to do it. So that's pretty much it. You're just going to rinse and repeat this and that is going to be it. I will see you guys again once we get down to the uh, towards the end of the mission.
Alright, there you have it, he is done, he is done. And of course if you want to get anybody up you can, the ones that are still alive. I like how my horse magically got there. <laughs> it's like we were on a helicopter. How did he get in? And that's it, ladies and gents. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I will see you on the final screen to see just how well we did. Development project has been added. Amazing. Mission complete. That right there is why you're the best, boss. The one and only. That's how you do it, guys. Hopefully I was able to help you out. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you, everybody, for the love and support. This was definitely a tough mission uh, to do. There might not be another video for a, little, for a few days as I'm heading to Nashville uh, with my wife uh, to go visit some old army buddies. But uh, thank you guys for the love and support, of course. Hopefully I was able to help you out and show you how you can complete this mission, No Traces, with getting both of the bonuses as well. Thank you guys so much. I love you. Take care of yourself. Do something nice for somebody. And of course, I will see you on the next mission. Peace out. Diamond Dogs.